thank you for being here. Um, welcome. Um, first of all, I'd like to know how many of you are involved in communication in, within your organization. Okay. How many people is uh, involved in fundraising with your organization? Okay, cool. Um, well, I was lucky enough three years ago to join this uh, crazy and amazing team of activists known uh, as uh, Animal Equality. And um, uh, as you're probably guessing from my terrible accent, I'm from Italy and I'm part of the Italian team. And, uh, in the past three years, uh, the focus of my work was mainly on um, communication and marketing and uh, fundraising. So in the next 30 minutes, I will try to convince you of uh, one thing that we strongly believe in Italy, which is that marketing can help your organization to do a better job. And uh, yeah, when I was writing the, the first draft of the abstract of uh, my talk um, I spent a couple of nights just for write four or five sentences and then after these couple of nights I finally found the courage to send the draft to a couple of uh, people whose uh, opinion is really important for me and uh, one of these people told me he liked the abstract but uh, he would have removed all the words referring to the real conflict from uh, this abstract. So I come back home, I open my laptop, and I rewrote the, the abstract again. And then I close my laptop, I pick up my, my mobile, and uh, I randomly run into the list of the speakers of this conference. And in that moment, I understood I was wrong in the little, those words. So I reopened my laptop and rewrote the same abstract, including all the words about the idea of conflict. Uh, if you were here in the past days and you've been listening to some of the talks, um, you will agree with me on the fact that it's almost impossible to not refer to people like Sharon or Jan or De Bruzia and call them fighters. And uh, if you have been at their talks, you will also agree with me on the fact that uh, it's almost impossible to not to call what we're doing here um, a fight. And in my opinion, it's not just a fight, it's a war. It's a, a war for uh, a couple of reasons. The first one, uh, test casualties. Um, some guy uh, a couple of days ago told that we activists always have this idea in the back of our mind with the numbers of all the animals that are being killed in this second, in this minute, in this hour, every day. And um, it's, I consider what you're doing here uh, as a war also because um, there are two sides that are fighting each other and basically each side is trying to destroy the other one. Uh, we as activists were trying to shut down and to, oops, yeah. uh, we're trying to shut down factory farms and slaughterhouses and on the other side, the industry is uh, basically trying to shut down our organization. So I think we are right when we say that uh, we are fighting a war and we, are, we can call ourselves, ourselves fighters. So uh, why talk about marketing in a talk that started with the idea of conflict and war? A um, few, uh, few reasons about about this idea. Um, money and capital uh, are how all the wars are played. And uh, mm, also the, the war that involves the, the most recent uh, military technology involves also uh, capitals and money. And marketing so far is the fastest way uh, and legal and ethical and safest um, way to move huge amount of money from point A to point B. And um, I think that the amount of lives that uh, our organizations are able to spare from the suffering of uh, factory farming is uh, uh, strictly related uh, to the number of funds that we're able to raise as organizations. So um, having the, the proper funds is basically the easiest way to gain all the power that we need to save animals and spare some suffering. And uh, I'd like to dig a little deep um, into the idea of 
power and its definition. So I, I can remember if this uh, is the Cambridge Dictionary or Wiki, uh, but basically there are two definitions of power. Power is the ability or capacity to do something or act in a particular way, like the power of speech, or the capacity or ability to direct and influence the behavior of others and the course of events. So if you are here, I assume you are uh, here because you want uh, uh, all animals to be free uh, and no longer raise and abuse and kill um, for food. You want maybe companies that start to care about animal rights and uh, um, probably you're here because you want to veganize the world and make all the people eat uh, amazing plant-based meat. So if you say that you want this, you're probably saying that you want the capacity or the, the ability to direct or influence the behavior of others and the course of events. So, um, at the moment, animals are still locked in factory farms and killed in slaughterhouses. Companies have just started to listen to uh, what the movement has to say. And yeah, people are still eating meat. So, um, I wasn't present at the talk uh, of uh, Christina, but uh, I'd like to uh, bring some uh, positivity inside of this talk. And so, uh, I'd like to talk about this theme. Uh, social phenomena like meat eating, factory farming, everything we fight against or everything we do um, are bi-directional. And what do I mean when I say that they are bi-directional? I mean that social phenomena have the power to influence the people involved with this phenomena. And at the same time, people have the power to influence the social phenomena. And this leads us to the second good news of the day. So, um, as the Bruzia um, said yesterday, we are a very young movement. Uh, despite all the uh, huge success that we were able to achieve in the past years, uh, this is still the, the very first stage of our movement. So, this thing related to the fact that we have the power to influence the social phenomena we're living in, um, make me feel comfortable in saying that we have the power and you have the power to change the world. And um, so uh, this session will be uh, mainly about uh, some things we learned in animal equality in Italia in the past uh, couple of years, three years, yeah. And uh, I'd like to um, use this idea and these things that we find out uh, as um, not really inspiration, but um, some tools to give you and feel free to test all the ideas that uh, uh, I'm trying to, to give you now and to stress test them and uh, come to your own conclusions. So the first thing that we realized in Italy is that we, we were not happy about the models that we have in the NGO environment. So uh, we thought that um, there were some other um, people in the world that were using, uh, in a better way, communication and uh, marketing. And so we uh, went looking for these new models in the corporate or in the business world. And in that moment, we switched to uh, a business-oriented approach to communication and marketing. And uh, we understood that we needed to learn how to use uh, the enemy weapons uh, and when I say weapons, I mean the strategies, the tactics, and uh, also the tools. So, the first thing that we discover is that we have the wrong idea about money, about capital, and about marketing. And uh, uh, we needed to uh, remove the bias that we have. Because we're facing one of the most powerful and richest and oldest industry in the world. And we need to make peace with the idea that uh, uh, the means are defined by the ends that we have. And uh, I think um, that this is more clear if I show you uh, this picture. With uh, the red bubbles, you see uh, the, the budget that the meat, some of the uh, brands in the meat industry have. And in the green bubbles, you see the animal rights organization budget. And uh, these data are old because I think they are from 2012, but I don't think the um, situation has changed that much. So I think this is why uh, we should start to delete all the bias that we have 
on money, capital, and marketing. The other thing that we understood is that uh, there is uh, um, a healthy model that we should copy and uh, follow. And is this wheel. Try to, to imagine the, the blue thing as a wheel, and uh, it, its uh, center is the leadership of a business. And this is the, how an healthy business works. Of course, every business has a product or a service, and that's what uh, makes the money come in. And once the money are in, there is a financial management of that money. And uh, in order to have money come in, you need to have a salesman or a sales force to uh, sell the product or the service. So you can still have the best, the best salesman in the world with the best product in the world and the best financial officer in the world. But if people don't know you and your product and don't trust you and your product, you're not going to have a healthy business. So we took this model and we decide to uh, build our own model. And this is basically the result. Um, financial man management leadership uh, are still the same. The core business, we decide it to be um, what your organization is doing. So in the case of animal equality is investigations, corporate outreach and advocacy. But you can put there basically everything that your organization is doing. And sales become fundraising because uh, uh, when I give money to somebody for a product or a service, I become the owner of that product or that service. But when I give money to a charity, I not becoming the owner of that charity. So there are some differences here. And marketing and communication are basically the same thing. So for those of you who are in the communication and marketing and fundraising department of your organization, the left side of this wheel, you probably won't have too much to say, but you can have a, a lot of things to say on the right side of that wheel, which is uh, marketing, communication, and fundraising. Um, so why marketing? Uh, we're trying to compel people to do uh, something specific. And marketing is the job that involves encouraging people to buy a product or a service. This is the Cambridge Dictionary. And um, for me, marketing is basically telling the right message to the right people at the right time and on the right medium. And this is why, for me, there's no difference between offline marketing and online marketing. They're basically the same, just working on uh, different mediums. And what happens if we uh, use marketing as a job that involves and encouraging people uh, to buy an idea of future? I think the comparison is uh, pretty much strong. So we can use marketing uh, to compel people to do something uh, specific with us or for us, which is helping the animals or we can ask them to help our organization to hire more professionals to uh, invest in the technologies that we want to see in the future or to buy the exposure that we need for our own messages. And this leads us to the third thing that we understood in these three years of animal equality, which is the thing that talking to everyone basically means talking to no one. Um, and this is not just because, as Sharon said yesterday, veganize the world uh, and reaching the critical mass that we need to do that is a monumental uh, process. But it's, it has also some mathematical reason behind it. On average, uh, in every market, only the fifth percent of the market is ready to trust you. And um, the... Um, this, thing, this idea is supported by the, what, what in the marketing world is called the seven times rule, which is a rule, uh, one of the oldest rules in marketing that says that a prospect should see your message seven times before it's ready to uh, believe it or to respond in a positive way to your call to action. So it can be buy or come to our event or something like this. And this uh, was before internet and before social media. Right now, the thing has changed a little bit, 
and um, it depends on the source, but this number is now or 16 or 7 by 7, so 42 times, which is a, a lot of uh, effort from the marketing department side. And um, yeah, what do we do with the other 95% of people which is not ready to believe in our message or respond in a positive way to our call to action? The best way to respond to this thing we find uh, after some years of studying is to uh, understand that the traffic, so the people that uh, run into your messages, um, have a different temperature. So if you remember this slide, where the uh, pink thing is uh, the fifth percent, and you try to imagine that slide over here, that fifth, uh, that five percent is on this side. But then you, and that that is the the hottest traffic that you have. It's the, the these are the hottest people that you have in your bucket. The um, the people that will that know you that uh, are going to support you and uh, that are going to respond in a positive way to your call to action. And then you have all the other 95%. And on the opposite side, uh, the cold traffic are the people that maybe don't even know you and then they maybe don't even know the problem. And I think it's crucial for every organization to have strategies for all the traffic temperatures that their target audience have. And this is because uh, uh, with hot traffic, you can ask uh, your target audience uh, uh, a harder call to action, like monthly donations. But you cannot do that with cold traffic. And so the bigger is the distance that is required to reach these people, the softer and the easier the call to action should be. You cannot expect that people that don't know you um, are willing to uh, subscribe to a monthly donation or are going to make a, um, a big gift to your charity. Another thing, um, once we have understood this, is that within these three categories of traffic, warm traffic and cold traffic, there are also other differences. Traffic can be divided in uh, the traffic you control, the traffic you don't control, and then traffic that you own. The traffic that you control is basically uh, paid traffic. Is everything uh, that are paid advertising online uh, or uh, direct mail you send people, uh, stuff that you pay for. Um, you can control this, but it's not for free, and you are not the owner of the traffic. Then there is the traffic that you don't control, and this is. Uh, like uh, the traffic coming from referrals in blog posts uh, to your website or uh, also uh, social media posts. You don't know who's going to click, when it's going to click, and how it is going to respond. So the best traffic ever is the traffic that you own. And uh, without question, this is the best. Um, it's good traffic because it's free. You know who is uh, in, inside of this bucket, and you can reach them uh, basically whenever you want with all the message that, that you want. So, uh, building a list become one of our priority, and uh, I strongly suggest you to uh, make this a priority of your organization as well. Um, emails are the most easier list you can uh, build, but uh, be creative, as a young teacher does uh, two days ago. Um, you can do with a uh, bot or uh, also app downloads. Uh, there is a reason why banks uh, and uh, mobile companies are uh, forcing us to download their apps in order to be able to use their services, and this is because in that way they can collect data and reach us whenever they want. So. Basically, everything that allows you to get in touch with your followers and as uh, supporters for free, and uh, every time you want to get them to get them to get your message, is the best traffic you can get. 
So there is another reason why uh, talking to everyone means talking to no one and is even more uh, mathematical, I think. And it's something that companies have understood very well. So um, what will, will you do with the one million of funds for, uh, for your NGOs? I mean, if your uh, organization is already collecting uh, one million of funds, then congrats, it's, uh, it's a good achievement. Uh, try to imagine another, uh, another amount uh, of money. And uh, really, a million of ways to collect a million of uh, dollars. And uh, dear, sorry for the terrible uh, image. You may have seen it if you're following someone entrepreneur account on Instagram, that's where I found it, but uh, I think it, it's pretty much self-explanatory. And the thing is, that if you want to raise a million of uh, dollars with selling a uh, $200 um, dollars product, you need 5,000 people. And those 5,000 people might be different uh, from the 300 people that will pay you uh, 278 dollars per month for 12 months, and this is why talking to no one, in, talking to everyone is talking to no one, because there are differences between these people, and if you're tackling the first category, uh, you are basically excluding all the other ones, and vice versa. So for the nonprofit, it's basically the same. You need just to find a way. And find your way to raise the amount of money that you need. And um, speaking about numbers, this is another idea that uh, we found very important for our organization, and it was to get rid uh, of vanity metrics. Vanity metrics are things that you can measure, but that basically don't matter. Um, they're easily changed or manipulated. And they don't bear a direct correlation uh, with numbers that speak about success. And let's do some examples about vanity metrics. Page views, if uh, you're not selling anything, you, if you're not collecting any kind of data or collecting signatures on your page, a page view basically means nothing. Uh, social media follower, uh, especially in these days when Facebook is asking uh, to pages a lot of money in order to share their, con their content. Uh, page. Social media followers are meaningless. Um, also, the number of emails in your list, if people don't open your emails and don't click your emails, are worthless. So, um, we understood that we needed to measure what matters. And in the corporate world, what matters are um, sales, profits, incomes, conversion rates, and basically. Uh, Everything that you have no evidence that um, supports your organization, your business is worthless. And numbers are um, more important than the ego that are working in corporations. That is why people get fired very easily if they don't bring results to the, the business. Uh, in the animal rights, we thought that uh, um, it's not really about the money but it's more about the amount of lives that uh, your decision will uh, impact and the amount of suffering that your decision will be able to spare. So from a communication and marketing point of view, uh, the, the best, um, we, we discovered that the best thing for our strategies was again to take inspiration of what is really making the difference in the corporate world. Um, and I'm speaking about communication and marketing, which are monetization plan. And it might sound complicated, but uh, the truth is that they are pretty easy. And uh, there are only three things to do. The first one is to increase the number of your clients. And if you're talking about non-profit, it's the number of the donors. The, the second thing to do is to increase the average size of the sale. And talking about the profits is the average size of the donation. Um, and the third thing to do is uh, to increase the number of times that client return and buy again. Um, you can easily change the, the word client with the, with the word donor, and this is what you need to do. So to do this, you need to calculate the number of your donors, of course, because you need where you are in order to uh, build the strategies to increase that. 
uh, figure out the average amount they give uh, on each transaction or gift and determine how often they're making the gift per year. And uh, let's say that you have $1,000. They make you an um, average gift of uh, $100 and they give two times per year. This is what happens if you increase with your marketing and communication strategies, you increase these three numbers only by the 10%. You, you add one third at your own budget. This means that if you are three people working in your organization, just by uh, increasing of the 10% your strategy, you will uh, probably be able to hire another person. I'm trying to imagine what happens if you can hire another person in your organization. So yeah, this is the math behind it. And if you are able to increase uh, your, uh, monet your monetization uh, by the 25% on each of the three previous uh, um, areas, you nearly double your income. Try to imagine what you can do if you can double the income of your organization. So uh, these four simple ideas, I mean, removing the stigma around money and marketing, so focusing on development and asking more, more frequently with the uh, bold ask. And um, trying not to reinvent uh, what already exists and is already working. Um, and I mean, switching to a business-oriented approach to marketing and communication. And understanding that talking to um, everyone means talking to no one. And getting rid of getting rid of vanity metrics that uh, mm, do not allow you to really understand how the situation is going. Uh, in 2018, um, helped Animal Equality Italia to release 10 investigations in 12 months. Uh, grow the biggest uh, uh, and the most active group of organized online activists in Italy that are the Animal Defenders, and Carolina can mobilize them basically whenever she wants to help the organization to reach the goals and also convince uh, 30 of the biggest food company in Italy to uh, get rid of cages for laying hands and this impacted five, only the third point impacted uh, 5 million of animals so yeah I know these uh, uh, might be just numbers but uh, I really believe that there is, there is a strong uh, relation between uh, these funds and what the organization is uh, doing because uh, um, you can work for some time with no, with no money, but it can last forever. And uh, if you can remember the image with the red bubble and the green bubble, uh, there's no way we're going to win the battle, and I think we can win. Maybe we won't see that day, but some people coming after us will we see that day. Um, there's no way we're going to win without the money, so thank you. I have no closing lines, because as a, the, the perfect Italian, I was late with the presentation, and I needed to finish it yesterday, so. Suggestions that that number should be increased. Uh, do you know if uh, those particular studies or research that that was based on, or was it just a saying to encourage people to try and the seven times rule? Yeah, um, it was. I think is a, a a rule from the golden age of marketing uh, during the 40s and the 50s, and. Uh, um, the last thing I listened to was a podcast by Dean Graziosi and he was saying that it was, it was a podcast uh, shared with Tony Robbins and they both agreed that on average in their industry is 16 times now but it depends on the market and on the... Um, I, I should suggest you to test it and see 
because really social media and internet have changed the environment. Thank you for a great talk. Do you have any uh, advice to people in Eastern Europe who might say like, we don't believe fundraising is gonna work in our country? Like, have you ever, have you ever at some point like thought, well, this is not gonna work in Italy or in other animal quality countries? Has this been this mentality, and how did you overcome it? And do you believe that uh, it's possible to do effective fundraising also in the Eastern countries? Yes, because if it is working in Italy, which is considered one of the, you know, big countries in Europe, it can work basically everywhere. And also, it's pretty easy to uh, make them understand that they are wrong, because you just need to test something. And uh, the, the thing that we find out is that uh, the, the first time that you test, you're going to get results. So. Um, I mean, you maybe won't be uh, looking for people that give you $2,078 per month for 12 months, but you can work with uh, uh, small amounts and uh, um, you, I mean, uh, there is a lot of people living in a country and you can work on smaller amounts and try to increase the number of the of the donors that you have. So that would be my, my first advice. The, um, the second one is that um, there are businesses uh, that are uh, making profits all over the world and selling the craziest thing, things. And uh, so well, I don't see any reason why people shouldn't care about animal rights and uh, what your organization is doing. Also because I, I think that the organization in Eastern Europe are uh, doing an amazing job and that job uh, is worth some some money in order to keep on. I don't know if I reply to your question. Okay, so is anyone else? Thank you. Uh, okay. so, uh, information for you more, uh, we will be giving surveys uh, on, in the drawers, so if you could fill the surveys out and then uh, on the next lecture you can give us uh, the surveys back. So we will be giving them right now.